Hello everybody. I know I've been meaning to do this for a while, but I'm going to do a short video on how our power systems work, how our water systems work, and well, just in general, I know Justin did a quick video on our basic setup, but uh, we're going to go through and show you a little bit more advanced. If you have any questions, feel free to ask too. Uh, I can check the comments and answer most of the questions you'll have. As far as our off-grid power system goes, of course, we've got Four kilowatts of solar there uh, that powers most of our house uh, most of the shed and then as well on top of the shed we have another it's kind of hard to see from this angle but we've got another 1.5 kilowatts or 1500 watts of solar on the roof that combined with the big array gives us 5500 watts which for us is more than enough and actually we've had many days where we've had extra power uh, it's a very simple setup. It was very cost effective. It works really well and it's really stable and it gives us a storage room essentially underneath the panels for stuff that can survive being rained on like our storage tank for getting more water and like our cement mixer. It works actually really well for a, kind of a lean-to storage shed. As far as the panels go, each of these four panels in arrays goes to a separate controller and then the ones on the roof as well they come through through the red wires through a breaker box that controls all the six of the solar controllers one through four is the four main rays five and well half of six i guess is the thousand watt on the roof and the 500 watt on the roof and they come in go into these guys these are solar controllers what they do is they take the 75 80 volts from the solar panels and it converts it to the 24 volts that charge our solar controllers or our batteries from the solar controllers they come through through fuse boxes which are kind of hard to see underneath the wires but every single one's got a green fuse everyone's fused i've left two open ones for expansion later on because eventually we plan on upgrading to about seven kilowatts but we haven't put that up yet uh, and then it comes through to our combiners into our batteries our batteries we just literally this morning added quite a bit more uh, fairly expensive upgrade but batteries weren't selling and right now with shipping i don't know how easy it's going to be to get batteries so we added in quite a few more batteries this is more than we should ever need but it's nice to have them and with these batteries they should last 15 plus years what we have is it's kind of hard to see it but see how they're all black here those are positive actually and then the gray kind of brownish gray color is our negative so we have 3.2 volts 3.2 four of those to get 12 volts on top and then jumps down into another 12 volt bank these two are combined together goes through back to the point here which again is 24 volt junction point goes into our inverter this is our big five kilowatt inverter uh, and it also runs out to DC systems we got a small hub here that is a 24 to 12 volt converter this is all 12 volt stuff so that allows us to run our 12 volt water pumps and 12 volt lighting throughout the shed and various other projects uh, once it comes out of the main inverter our power comes out through the heavy gauge wire into our main junction box these are all our breakers for our shed as well as the two main breakers for the dome later on we'll eventually get a 240 inverter so that this is already set up for that so that i can run 240 volts so i can run larger appliances in the dome as well as in the shed eventually i'd like to be able to get a welder and be able to work on larger projects right now surprisingly we were only using 94 watts of power that's probably just the fan and oh what else probably the routers in the shed as well as in the dome running so everything else is running directly off dc so we're not using much power at all right now we're still charging we're doing bulk charge meaning our batteries are still being charged uh, later on it'll turn to absorption for a few minutes and then float Float is usually what we have around 11 o'clock uh, or earlier, which is awesome. Meaning anytime it's on float, 
we have as much power as we could want. We can run pretty much anything we need as well as extra. Uh, right now we're sitting at 27.73 volts, which isn't bad. 28 volts is essentially charged, so we're almost charged. Even with this huge battery bank and putting in more cells that I know were fairly dead, we're getting in quite a bit of solar. That's allowing us to charge it quite rapidly right now. Actually, let's see what we're getting for power. We are getting right now almost 100 amps of solar coming in. So we're getting 2.5 kilowatts out of our solar right now. And it's quite early in the morning, which is pretty cool. So since I just added more batteries, this is off a little bit. Uh, it thinks it's at 100% because it's not sure what the voltage is or what the percentage is because it has to go through and wait till the batteries hit 28 volts for it to know what the full voltage is. Normally that is really accurate, which is very nice. But um, essentially this is our power setup. As far as water goes, we have our big storage tank that you saw behind the shed. That comes in through the floor right here, comes through the main system, a primary rough filter, our main pump, which supplies water to everything in the dome as well as the shed, goes through a couple more scrub filters, through a UV sterilizer just in case. That's powered right now off of AC, but we have the ability to run off the small inverter so it can run directly off the batteries if something happens to the main AC in the house. And then most of the water comes through, goes back down through the gray tube into the dome. For the stuff that we are using, we have a manifold here that splits off. This will eventually be to our faucet in the bathroom once we actually put that in. This goes to our shower. The shower comes up and it comes through this valve. This valve is controlled by a switch on the shower. So when we want to take a shower, we just flip the switch on. That turns the pressure from the main pump to feed the shower. In the shower sump, there's actually a float switch that once the float switch hits a certain spot, it'll switch over to running off of the main system. The system draws from that sump in the shower, goes through a pre-filter, through a secondary pump. This is the pump that runs the shower most of the time. Through two filters, a pressure tank, a really tiny one, and another UV filter, and back into the shower and into our hot water heater. We currently are running, a, I believe it's 2.5 gallon uh, electric water heater because like I said during the day we have plenty of power and this works great except for the fact that it'd be nice if it was closer to three gallons because it starts getting chilly at the end of the shower but it works eventually I'll add in a bigger shower uh, or sorry a bigger water heater and we'll put in this unit in the dome underneath the sink so that we have instant hot water at the sink <sighs> a lot of people ask too what this guy is this is actually a cell phone booster we have horrible cell phone service out here. So we have an antenna on the roof of the shed that comes in underneath here and this boosts our 3G service. I'd love it if it was 4G service, but our 4G service out here is horrible. As in it works 2% of the time, if that. So we usually rely on 3G. As far as the shower goes, like I mentioned, we have a switch right now. It's off. If I push the switch, you see the red light goes on. And that turns on that valve that turns on the main pressure. And then if I turn it to that one, it actually empties the sump out. And we have a rock bed behind that feeds a bunch of plants. They're just native plants. We don't have any actual food plants or anything like that running off of it because it's just shower water. But it works really well. It's a simple setup and eventually I'll add in more filters. But for the moment, since you're only taking a short shower because we're limited on hot water, it works very well. Uh, it's rather simple. I know it looks like a lot of wires and a lot of tubes, but for the most part, you got water coming in, it gets pressurized, goes out to the dome and to the shower. For the shower, it goes through the pressure in, goes to the hot water, back of the shower. And then it's, once the shower gets full, it comes up through another valve into the pump and out, or actually, sorry, I apologize. It comes into the, that way, into the pump and out. What that valve is, is that's the dump valve. That allows us to feed the plants and empty the shower, so you always have fresh water in the shower. So for us, we can shower on three gallons of water, and 
As long as the water heater keeps up, we have nice showers for as long as you want on three gallons and it gets filtered. These filters get changed all the time. And actually I should probably change the pre-filter for our main filter uh, for the dome. It's getting a little dark from the sediment. Uh, we have that really fine clay that gets everywhere and including into the tank occasionally when we fill it. So we have a pre-filter that pulls out just that fine dust. Then we have a fine carbon filter after that as well as the UV. So as far as water goes, it's pretty decent. Um, the sump also has in the shower quite a few different things to help filter the water before it hits this the system up here. Uh, that's just a, essentially a polishing setup to help keep it clean and the UV sterilizer does sterilize the water again. Uh, for the most part, that's kind of our power setup and water setup. It seems like a lot, seems like a lot of wires, but it's pretty simple. Oh, one thing I forgot, these wires here, what these do is these keep the different areas of the battery balanced. Underneath, out of the way so the dogs don't bump it, is our balancer. All this does is it takes this bank of battery here, this bank of battery here, and the other banks, and keeps them equal so that we don't have any of these overcharging. If they overcharge, they will puff up, and that's not the best thing. It usually is not horrible for them, but if they overcharge too much and puff up, they won't fit in where they are, and they will slowly lose capacity because they're overcharging all the time. We have a safety shutoff switch for our main battery too. I'm not going to turn it off, obviously, because we'll lose power to everything. We have safety fuses for our inverter right here. And everything is fused, so it's a big safety thing. As far as solar goes, we have 30 amp breakers that protect all our solar panels and the solar controllers from overcharging and getting too hot. We've got fuses on pretty much everything, just for safety's sake. One of the biggest things on off-grid that I've seen uh, working on other systems is there are no fuses. I know fuses are frustrating because you got to cut wires and add more connectors, but a fuse protects you from burning down your power system. It's kind of important. The other question I get is, can a system like this run air conditioning? Well, this shed actually has its own little air conditioner. And believe it or not, that air conditioner is planning to keep this shed nice and cool in the summer. And it only uses 460 watts max. Uh, from what I actually measured, it only uses about 380 watts. So it can run off just a couple panels worth of power. So we have plenty of power. And actually, as a backup, we have an electric heater right now to keep the shed warm. Uh, if it gets too cold, I have it set at about 50 right now to keep the puppies nice and warm so that we don't have to run the propane heater in the shed. Speaking of puppies, we've got Mia over there and a whole pile of puppies sleeping. You know, a couple woke up now that I walked over. But if anybody's interested, we have a couple puppies that need homes right now. So feel free to give us a holler and we'll try to work it out for you. As far as heat goes temporarily, it's not the best setup, but we got a propane heater that is a really nice catalytic heater and it works amazingly well and is very efficient at heating the shed. It's just normally the shed is insulated well enough and it's burned two feet in that we don't have to heat the shed. We had 31 degrees last night and the shed stayed nice and toasty. We had 52, I think, this morning in the shed. And right now I've got the door open, obviously, so the puppies can go out since I'm here. And we have 65 degrees, so it's not too bad out and it's nice and sunny and it's gorgeous. Uh, I know I'm not the best at doing videos, but if you guys have any questions, feel free to send us a couple comments and I'll answer anything you have. And I'll probably do a few more videos. If not, I'll have Justin redo this video so it's a little bit more organized. But in the meantime, it's gorgeous out. Hopefully you guys have nice weather as well. Go out and enjoy it. Have some fun. Thanks again, guys.